ಓಂ ನಮ ಶಿವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮ ಶಿವಾಯ ಓಂ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಓಂ ಅಮ ಓಂ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಓಂ ಸ್ಪಷ್ಟ ಶಬ್ದಾದಿಯುಕ್ತು ಭೌತಿಕತ್ವಮತಿಸ್ಫುಟ ಆಕ್ಷಾದಾವಿತಾಸ್ತ್ರಯುಕ್ತಿಭ್ಯಾಮವಧಾರ್ಯತ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕ್ವೈಟ್ ಎವರೆಂಟ್ ದಟ್ ದಿ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ವಿಚ್ ಸೌಂಡ್ ಟಚ್ ಎಟ್ಸೆಟ್ರ ಆರ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ಲಿ ಡಿಸರ್ನಬಲ್ ಆರ್ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಫೈವ್ ಎಲಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಚುರಲ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರೀಸನಿಂಗ್ It can be conceived that even for the senses and mind, the subtle elements are the basis. Chandogya Upanishad 654-671, Prashna Upanishad 6-4. The organs are the combination of the elements because they coexist. How do you know they coexist? On the basis of the above scriptural texts. So, let's take a look at them. Chandogya Upanishad 6.5.4 Thus, my dear, mind is made up of food. Life breath is made up of water, and speech is made up of fire. Explain to me again, reverend sir. So be it, my child, he said. Chandogya Upanishad 6.7.1 Man, my dear, is made up of sixteen parts. For fifteen days, do not eat. Drink as much water as you like. Life breath is made of water, and if you did not drink water, the life breath would be cut off. And Prashna Upanishad 6.4 He created prana. From prana, he created faith, space, and air, fire, water, earth, organs, mind, food. From food, he created vigor, self-control, mantras, rites, worlds, and name in the worlds. Panchadashi 2.18 Ekadashendriyayuktha shastrenapyavagamyate ಯಾವತ್ ಕಿಂಚಿತ್ ಭೇದಾತ್ತಿದ್ ಆಂಗ್ ಶಬ್ದೋದಿತ ಜಗತ್ ವಟೆವರ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ರಸೀವ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ದಿ ಸೆನ್ಸಸ್ ದಿ ಆರ್ಗನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಕ್ಷನ್ ದಿ ಮೈಂಡ್ ರೀಸನಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಚುರಲ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ರಿಫರ್ಡ್ ಟು ಆಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಡಂ ಇನ್ ದ ಶ್ರೂತಿ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ದಟ್ ಫಾಲೋಸ್ ಇಡಂ ದಿಸ್ applied even to past things is not wrong, since they are felt to be in the present by God or a sage like Udalika Aruni. See and compare Gita 7.26. Vedaham samatitani vartamanani charjuna bhavishyani chabhutani mam tu veda nakashchana I know, O Arjuna, the beings of the whole past, those of the present, as also those of the future. But me, none knows. Panchadashi 2.19 Idang sarvang pura srishte re kame vad vitiyakam Sadeva sin namarupe nasta minyanurer vachaha Before all this was created, there was being alone, one only without a second. There was neither name nor form. So said Aruni. Compare Chandogya Upanishad 6.2. The meaning of the Upanishadic line has been given but not the exact words. Compare Chandogya Upanishad 6.3.2 and 3. Chandogya Upanishad 6.3.2 This deity conceived, 
Well, now may I, entering into these three divinities through this living self, Jivatman, differentiate name and form. Chandogya Upanishad 6.3.3 Of these, may I make each one threefold, conceiving thus, this deity entered into those divinities through this living self and differentiated the names and forms. Panchadashi 3.20 Vrikshasya svagato bheda Patra Pushpa Paladibihi Brikshantarat Sajatiyo Vijatiya Shiladitaha. Differences are of three kinds. The difference of a tree from its leaves, flowers, fruits, etc., is the difference within an object. The difference of one tree from another tree is the difference between objects of the same class. The difference of a tree from a stone is the difference between objects of different classes. 1. Existing in oneself. 2. Difference in species. 3. Difference of genus. Panchadashi 2.21 Tatha sadvastuno bheda trayang praptang nivaryate Similarly, doubt may arise that the one and only reality, Sat or Brahman, may also have differences. So all the three kinds of differences have been negated by the Shruti in three words, denoting the oneness of Brahman, its definiteness, and rejection of duality, respectively. The three words are ekam eva advitiyam, one only without a second. Avadharana is restriction. So here, in three words denoting oneness of Brahman, negating svajatiya beda, further, restriction negating svagata bheda, and rejection of duality, negating vijatiya bheda, respectively. Text 22 Sato navaya vasangskyas tamadang shasya nirupanat nama rupe one cannot doubt that Brahman, the one and only reality, has no parts, for its parts cannot be conceived of. Names and forms cannot be its parts, for before creation they did not arise. Nothing whatsoever can be predicated of Brahman. Jada can have parts, but Sat is neither Jada nor perishable. It has no name, for names are given for differentiating things. It has no form. The scriptures describe it so. By affirming its oneness, no positive attribute is implied. Namaste. So what is Vidyaran you're trying to prove by bringing in all this context, all this background from the Gita, the Upanishads, you name it. <laughs> it's like he's throwing the whole kitchen sink at us, including the whole second part of chapter six of Chandogya Upanishad, which is a lesson by a great soul Udalaka Arunyi, which means he is the speaker from the woods. He is speaking the truths that are taught in the forest, the esoteric truths to his son. And his son keeps asking, please explain again. I don't get it. Please explain again and again and again. And he keeps saying, Tatvamasi, Tatvamasi. And what is that? Huh? There's this, and there's that. 
So this is the world made of countless distinctions, discriminations, and differences. And that is Brahman, which has no distinctions, no discriminations, no differences whatsoever. This is perhaps the most important distinction between the world and Brahman. The world is full of names and forms, countless names and forms, unlimited, really. And the deeper you dig into this world, the more details you find. And it's unlimited. You can go down in scale into the atoms, or you can go up in scale into the galaxies, galaxy clusters, and whatever. You will find this same ever-increasing diversity that can neither be explained nor understood by the human mind. Because the human mind itself is made of these differences. We make a distinction between one thing and another, and then we try to evaluate it based on its survival value. When we encounter something threatening, we run away. When we encounter something that enhances our survival, we try to appropriate it, make it into a possession, and enjoy it. So the mind is the agent. The mind is the doer. The mind is the cause of everything that is within our ambit of causality, which is actually very small. There are three categories of phenomena in the Vedic lexicon, adhyatmika, adhibhotika, and adhidaivika. Adhyatmika are those phenomena that are caused by one's own self. Adhidaivika is that which is caused by the gods, and adhibhotika is that which is caused by nature. So there are three causes to all phenomena that we experience. And of them all, the human cause, the adhyatmika, is this very smallest one. Huh? But look at the changes that are happening in the world today. These are adhidaivika and adhibhotika in nature. The gods are looking at humankind overcome by hubris and say, oh, these guys have overstepped their bounds. They're causing too much damage to the environment. We have to rein it in. So nature is decreasing the uh, testosterone and the sperm count in the human male rendering them less able to reproduce. And of course, the mind looks at this and says, oh, a decrease in survival. I have to do something about this. So the scientists are racing to come up with some solution. <laughs> but of course, it's way too late. Way, way too late. I heard about environmental change and the impact of climate change and so on. Back in the 1960s, from some Native American shamans who I met through my first wife, who was half Native American. And they told me all the things that are happening today. They said the human population will decrease, human reproduction will increase, men will become more like women, the nature will strike back, and change the climate, and we'll have horrible storms and pandemics and all of this stuff. Back in 1967, this was. How did they know? I asked them. They said, oh, our grandfathers told us. And how did they know? Well, their grandfathers told them. So for hundreds of years, the Native Americans have known what was coming because they had superior wisdom. They had a deeper connection with nature, Adibautica, and with God, Adidaivaka. So they knew God was pissed off at these Westerners. 
And the nonsense that they were going to do was going to result in some heavy changes to the planet. The planet is our basis of life. It is what sustains us. If we damage the planet, we ultimately decrease our own survival. But what does this have to do with all this heavy philosophy? Well, we can see that nature and phenomena and the human being and all life is made of parts. Being made of parts reveals that it is a product. Well, that's obvious, right? All bodies are produced by previously existing bodies. All species reproduce according to their kind. This is nature's law. So everything in nature is a product, and it's made up of parts. That means it's incomplete. It is never going to be whole, because all the parts are ultimately different, separate, and they're only acting together because of the influence of some higher power. And in our case, it's the mind. The mind is what kind of glues together all the separate parts of the body and makes them function as a whole. So even the mind has parts. We can divide it into thinking, reasoning, memory, imagination, dreaming, sleep, waking, and so forth. So all these things that have parts are never going to be the supreme. Why? Because they're fragile. They're vulnerable. Any shock can make them disintegrate into their component parts. Isn't it? Like if you get in a car wreck, the body can break. The bones can break. Things can happen to the body that destroy its survival value. And then what? Well, then the mind picks up its memories and stuff and goes to the next body. And this is going on eternally. This is the nature. This is existence. Because existence itself is a product. Existence itself is made up of parts. Only Brahman is a single whole. Only Brahman is partless, unified, one. Everything else is divided. Look at time. Time is divided into past, present, and future. I mean, everything that we examine, all phenomena, the elements, and so forth, the senses, their objects, the phenomena and relationships between them, all are made of parts. So none of them can be the supreme. See, this is the theme of this second chapter. Remember, the first five chapters described Sat, the divine existence of Brahman. So in this second chapter, we are shown how to discriminate between Brahman and the world, between that which has parts and that which has no parts. Brahman is the whole. Therefore, Brahman is indivisible and eternal, unborn and undying, not subject to any phenomena, never becomes an object even of consciousness. But Brahman knows itself. It knows itself to exist, to be conscious, and to be full of bliss. And so we, as products of Brahman, also know ourselves to exist, to be conscious. But we have some trouble with the bliss part. <laughs> so we go chasing after these material objects and phenomena, trying to find the bliss in them, not realizing that whatever bliss we may experience in this world is only a reflection of Brahman. And Brahman is who we ultimately are. Aham Brahmasmi. And as 
Aruni tells his son, Tatvamasi, you are that, not this, but that whole one Brahman. Aum Tat Sat, Aum Shati Aum, Aum Namah Shivaya. <laughs>